Warning! The video you're about to watch is known as an episode. This means I locked Exuma in a cupboard and made him play Minecraft for days on end. Prepare yourself for time lapses and Minecrafting on an epic scale. If you enjoy these insane videos, then leave a like, you crazy fool, and I may lock Exuma up again. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Mesa Vide server and as you might know from the title of this video and the name of it, this is episode number two. Or at least it's going to be an attempt to make the episode. If you haven't seen the first episode and you don't know what it's about, it's where we attempt to do a humongous amount of stuff in one single episode and this area that we're in right now is the location where we did all of that so if you haven't been brought up to speed on the Hermitcraft series I'm going to put a link to that on your screen I'd highly recommend you go and check it out but this episode is episode number two it's not going to be quite as epic what we're going to be doing is probably a little less in the overall scheme of things but anyway let's go and look at what we did in the first one you can see all of this up here was built and if I throw an ender pearl up there we can see the entire scope of the project so this is our guardian farm there are currently no actual guardian farms in it and that's one of the things that I hope to achieve in this episode to get those in place but mostly to work on the underside of this project because this is eventually going to be my base and it isn't all just about how pretty it looks up the top here we're going to make something down below as well and I have already started work on that so we're going to wander over here and see what is going on you can see I've sort of dug away a particular shape so far and this shape goes all the way down to the bedrock level so the idea is that this kind of build or structure, whatever you want to call it, that we've got going on is going to continue down the side and it's going to do so with these colours right here. It's going to come down at these little bits so the shape sort of fades down the side and then it's going to drop down with some different materials all the way down to the bottom and we're going to do that going around this entire area. So I picked out this bit because we go up to a corner and we go across the side here which is like a diagonal. And you get a sense of the scope of how big this project is going to be. But all of this right here is going to be dug all the way down to bedrock. And apparently I missed a single block there. And that is what we're going to start this one off with. There is going to be a lot of construction and things being dug. But this will be our first little project. So what I think I want to do straight away is dig this thing further down through all of that area. So you can see how the diagonal is going to look when these walls like stretch back in that direction. So at the beginning of this dig I've been conducting an experiment and that is to have a second beacon over here. So as well as having haste... Oh there's a little guy! Oh these guys are always difficult to deal with. Oh two of them! Jeez! <laughs> That's not good. Hey I'm trying to record don't you know? Wow they always manage to like whack you before you can hit them it feels like. So they are tough to deal with. And I'm eating. This is part of the experiment that I was going to talk about. I've got a regeneration beacon here. I've also decided to put speed with it as well. And that's because when you're out in this area, you're getting attacked like mobs like I just was. And then you eat food to recover your health. And it costs a lot of that. So what I've been doing is using the regeneration to gain my health back. Wow, these guys are kicking my butt as well. And then, yeah, it feels like I'm using less food overall, which is a good thing, I guess. Anyway, I want to go out into this area and just show you the progress so far. Because we've run into a little bit of a problem. And that is my storage area. <laughs> it is right in the middle of where we're going to be digging out and opening up this area. However, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's not really going to get in the way. So when we open all of this up, this thing is going to be floating out of the side, which is just going to look quite odd, I think. So I'm just mining out a lava lake here and I'm thinking, boy oh boy does this take some time. What did I do last time this happened? We of course dropped some sand into it. I've got plenty of gravel around here and you can kind of see where the lava lake has come through here as I've just been focusing on it. Thing is, it's taken me a long time to do just this little bit compared to what we've done elsewhere. It's probably taken me more time, but we need the obsidian for what we're building later on. So it kind of makes sense to do it now, but boy oh boy does it slow down the process. My experiment with the food is going rather well. We're down to five pumpkin pies and I have actually been over here for quite some time because I've done a lot more than I originally intended to. And yes, it's definitely making a difference. So whenever we take damage, regeneration takes care of that instead of our food. So it makes sense and it seems to work in actuality. Anyway, this is what I've dug out. And as I said, I've done more than I originally intended. I've gone all the way over this side as well. 
So you can see that area has been dug out. And the idea here is that we're transitioning into our walls. So at the top, what we have is space to place a bunch of blocks, which are going to lead to the wall itself, which will be very dark. I'm going to build it out of obsidian and other materials. So that goes down by six blocks, then by five, then four, three, and two and one going down into the bedrock. And that's going to basically stretch around you have a look there where it follows the shape of what's up above so that means a huge area down here is going to be cleared out and that's why I cleared out the center here so we could look up and start to get an idea of what the view is going to be like so the next thing we will do is just tear out this portion right here that's sort of in the way of looking up there and then we can get a real sense of the scale of this project about a million and one mobs just attacked me then <laughs> while I was digging that away. It was just one after another, skeleton zombies and a creeper dropped on me out of nowhere and killed me. But that doesn't really matter anymore because check this out. There you go. That is the view of that area. It's very dark right there, isn't it? And these beacon beams are certainly doing a lot to illuminate that. So it is something that we could consider perhaps adding more beacon beams, but also just adding some lights up there as well. Anyway, anyway, the lighting up there isn't for right now. We've got to focus on opening up this area. And boy, oh boy, is that starting to happen. <laughs> yeah, you can get a real sense of scale as to how big this room down here is going to be. And surprisingly, this bedrock area down the bottom here, it isn't too difficult to clear it of blocks. You do have some sort of stuck in the side there, but now there's just bedrock everywhere. And that means that mobs aren't spawning on it, which makes digging in this area a little bit more pleasant. It would also help if I lit these areas up properly, right? Because, <laughs> um, yeah, there's always just mobs coming out of nowhere. So I've moved the portal over here next to our blob, which is spoiling the view, and just dug from that side over here to over there. And we're going to continue doing some digging. And I've been thinking, do you know what's needed? A time lapse. I love to do time lapses in these episodes, or episodes as it's called, and I think now would be a good time to do that. Well, as always, I do hope you have enjoyed the time lapse. And now what we're going to do is turn around and you will see that much more has been done than what you saw in the time lapse alone. Ah, look at this. Floaty blocks. That's from where we're digging and occasionally, you know, ghost blocks appear. Let's get rid of those. I've gone around and basically done everything up to where the floor we had was before. At this point right here, which means we've got another big dig to do all the way down into the bedrock. However, this bit will probably be a fair bit easier and it's kind of hard to kind of make this in episode interesting at this point because really all we're doing is just digging. So I'm going to continue digging while I let you know. You may have noticed my voice sounds a little bit different. That is because I started the epic sode back at my old place and then I moved out and now we're at the new place and I don't have my shovel. Typical. Let's start digging where there isn't dirt then. Um, so yeah, you can probably tell if you've been following what's going on around the channel that this has taken me quite some time to record so far and we're nowhere near even getting started yet. So these epic so you know, the last one took me a couple of weeks. This one is probably going to take me a month or so. There is a huge amount of digging and with the moving and the chaos of all of that, it just takes a long time. So this kind of project, you know, spans over quite some time here on the server. 
Oh my, oh my, oh my. This is looking spectacular. <laughs> and so much work has been done. I've been looking forward to recording this clip for ages. It has probably been almost a week since I last recorded. Something like that. And I thought, you know what, camera account time to fly around and show you what's been done. We've been digging out, but I've been leaving behind the obsidian. And occasionally you get some ghosty blocks and things that I missed. The obsidian is going to be the last bit to go because it is just, you know, so tedious to, uh, to mine. But otherwise, all the other areas have been hit up. And this might end up taking the longest. That obsidian is going to be a pain. I'm going to calculate how much I need in total and maybe use some sand here. But I need so much obsidian for one of the latest stages that I may end up just mining it all. We'll have to calculate and see. But that's where we are at progress at the moment. And before the obsidian, there is one other thing that I would like to do over here. And that is, of course, to commit some Minecraft blasphemy. Nether break spawners, they say. We are going to go ahead and just do that anyway. Yes, it always feels bad to do that because you can make a farm. But that thing is right in the middle of where we're going to be building. We're going to be building lots of interesting things in here. That's for sure. And it has to go. <laughs> so it never feels nice to do that. And you know, it's only a spider spawner. And we have a spider farm already. Plus, it's not like it's a double spider spawner. That would be a tragedy, I know. But anyway, we'll get this thing cleared up. And then I'll get to mining all of that obsidian. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and time consuming. Well, I believe we have accumulated a double chest of obsidian. Probably more. I've got a little bit more right here. Just doing the last bit of removal. Walking over here and then it hits me. Aha! Finally, it's time to move on to the next stage. So I'm giving you a good look of what it is like right now. You know, some of those patches over there sort of look like, you know, they're not finished. They are. Believe me, the structure is all correct. And now we're going to do something crazy. Yes, we're now going to do something crazy. Okay, we're doing it. We're going to hit the switch. We're going to make the next step happen. Oh, and that also powers that. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to put that back again. Wow, there goes my ride. I wonder if I can catch it up. So if you kept up with the series, these yellow lines might be a little bit of a giveaway. We are sending a redstone signal through some chunks. And why would we be doing that? Because we're going to the lazy chunks. Where we have dragon eggs and pistons, <laughs> we are removing bedrock. We are removing a lot of bedrock. And I feel like this might be one of those moments where I've not just shot myself in the foot. I think I've shot myself in the face. <laughs> uh, this is going to be insane. I plan on building some much bigger contraptions with these pistons. Um, but we have dropped our first little wave of them right here. And yeah, we're going to break all of the bedrock. I don't know what else to say about it, really. It's going to be a very long and tedious task. I'm already thinking this was a... Yeah, you were thinking, right, this is a really bad idea. Now, we have to place lots and lots of pistons like this over and over again. And this itself takes a fair bit of time to put together. And we've only done a few rows here. Now when I place the next one, it means I've got to put some blocks over here coming across temporarily to place the pistons. And the whole thing is just a bit nuts really, to be fair. And as I've started to do this, which took a fair bit of time, I realised that we are not looking at like hours and hours of time. We're looking at like days, weeks and months here. I could potentially be looking at a very long time before getting this done. And I'm thinking, is it actually worth it? My plan was to remove... All of this bedrock and put glass at the bottom, black glass. I just thought it would be so amazing to have the bottom of our base just look down into the void. And that's why I brought all of that black glass from Wren a while ago. And I've since realised that that's never going to happen, basically. If I commit to doing this, it will take so long that we'll probably never actually see it finished. And I want to get this episode finished and out to you. And I feel like... Yep, yeah, I made a mistake, but hey, I've caught it before we're too committed here. You see, what we can do is scale back our ideas a little bit and have the glass at this height right here, which I think would be pretty cool. And yeah, we will just have to remove all of this and then we will know that, yep, there's a few dragon eggs down there and some bits of bedrock over on this side have been removed, but you probably will never know in the long run. So, yep, we're going to scale this idea back. If you are disappointed in any way, I think you'd be more disappointed if you saw this episode in 2018, right? Because 
I mean, this is insane. <laughs> this is this is just not possible. And there is actually a better way to do this. What I could have done instead of rows of pistons is put a batch of signs, like one on this one, and then all the rest of them are attached to the first one. And then I put dragon eggs on top of all of that. And that actually sounds a little bit more doable. So there will be a period here where I start to think about, do I want to commit to that? Because I can make signs easy and I can put them on one single piston and have them spread over a large area. It's actually starting to sound like not a bad idea, that idea. Hmm. Decisions. So as I'm tidying up here, I have given it some serious thought. And I think you've got to look at the bigger picture. There's a lot more going on here on YouTube than just Hermitcraft. And if I put a lot of time into this, then we're taking away time from other things. And so I think it's wise to actually put this off for now. But the more that I think about it, the whole signs thing really does make it seem a lot easier. And if it is easier, it might be possible. So maybe if ever we do an episode free, then maybe one of the things that I do there is remove this floor. And what we're going to build eventually in this room will be a lot higher up than where the floor is, which means I'll have easy access to this to remove it if that's what I wanted to do. So basically, we're not going to rule it out, but there's no way we're going to do it in this episode. So it might just be something we do in the future. The last time I recorded was a very long time ago. I don't know how long it was. I don't know what I was even talking about. But we are now going to move on to another phase in this area, which is doing some building, decorating the interiors around here. We're going to start off with a little bit just by doing this top area where the blocks transition to our walls, which are going to be like the big deal. And if you pay attention to the numbers here, you'll probably figure out what's going to be on those walls. So anyway, we need these four different materials and we need four and a half stacks of each of them. I'm going to gather them first and we'll do this top bit. And I'm also going to be gathering some things that will take me a lot more time. For example, nether bricks, a lot of those to gather. This is stacks, by the way, <laughs> not single amounts. And then obsidian, we need 23 and a half stacks of, right? And we dug away all the obsidian from around here. This is exactly how much I have. That is 23 and a half, pretty much, you know, an extra six. <laughs> so that worked out extremely well. And then we need some black clay, which will be me buying some dye from false and then uh, yeah, dyeing up a load of clay. And then we need coal blocks, and that one stumped me a little bit. So in my supply, I have about 18 um, stacks of coal blocks. 18, I think it's more like 12 stacks of coal blocks at the moment. But then it got me thinking that I've collected up some coal ore. This is from my chests that I have over at the base area. And where we've been mining over here, there's actually like loads of coal. Look at that. Some in there, a stack of coal ore. So I'm going to go look at this now. We will probably have enough for what we need. I've been putting a message out on the server in our various chats saying, you know, Hermit's help, I need some coal, but it looks like I might actually have enough myself. We'll have to see. I'm going to rummage through all of these chests and see how much of this stuff I can muster up. So all of that coal that we just broke down earned us this much right here, which is not enough. However, I had all of this in my base as well, so we are getting close to what we need. And my good friend Scar has come to the rescue here. Also, you can see I've been gathering up the wall. He dropped me off some coal over here in the base as well. And there's a lot in here. This is very, very generous. So Scar, if you're watching, totally appreciate this. That alone is probably enough to get us through here. So it looks like we gathered all of the coal that we need. We're getting close on the wall front as well. So we've got to dye this stuff. And before long, we're going to start building. So it turns out with Scar's contribution that we've still not got quite enough. But this is enough to yield what we need. So again, thank you, Scar. You've come to the rescue there. And up here, I've got all of the other materials that we need as well. As you can see, we have four and a half stacks of each of these different colors. If we look up above, you can probably figure out where this is going to go, right? It is going to continue that pattern and going down the edge here all the way around, which means we've got a little bit of building to do. At last, we're getting to the building bit. I've been looking forward to this and it's going to be quite difficult because I've got to pillar up with some scaffolding and, and go around bit by bit. It's going to be quite awkward. So I was really hoping this was going to be some sort of spectacular reveal. 
And it isn't really, because it's such a small and subtle change in the scale of things. As you can see, there is a transition around the border um, just across here, and that's where those materials went to. Anyway, soon we'll be doing a time lapse because we're going to have to do a lot of building for these walls right here. But we do have some more resource gathering. Can I remember off the top of my head what the other materials were? I believe some of it was dark clay and some of it was nether brick. So maybe we'll focus on that. I got a lot of netherrack lying around that we can smelt up. So there it is. That's all the nether brick that we need. And this next one might be quite expensive because it's going to be black clay and we need to dye it which means we need to buy tons and tons of ink sacks from false the other thing that we need as well is 21 and a half stacks of black glass which I actually got from Ren quite some time ago which is something you may remember so let's go and grab that you know in my mind I thought we were going to be spending a lot of diamonds here but of course this isn't wool this is hardened clay we're working with so you get eight stacks for each stack of die which means we only need three and then we get 24 stacks so I was thinking we were going to spend a lot of diamonds there for a moment but no just three rain rain please go away it's so ugly <laughs> anyway I've got all the materials here now we're going to jump into a time lapse which is why I am on the camera account we're just going to build a small section of the wall to begin with probably just this corner over here so I guess the camera will be positioned somewhere around this area and we'll jump into a time lapse So that was a short one because I realised as soon as I started building that this is all just going to look very dark on the video and in general it's actually going to look really dark. I just didn't want it to be a flat colour. So here are how all of our materials look together. Pretty cool right? There is also this trim of glass which we are currently inside. You can sort of see it if I move off and on like that and that goes across these blocks to stop mobs spawning on them. So there are no light sources over here. And I believe it just so happens that this glass right here kind of lines up with the top level of bedrock. Obviously the original plans were to remove the bedrock but that was kind of insane basically. So we're not going to do that. But what we could do is stretch the glass out across this entire area. And then I would go around and like remove all the odd blocks like that where I could. And no mobs would be able to spawn down here as well as up there. Anyway that's turned out pretty cool. We're now going to focus on doing this section over here next. So you'll never be able to guess what we are going to do next. Aha, it's time for a reveal. Ooh, look at that, it goes around there. That was not what you were expecting. Maybe you didn't expect it to go all the way over there as well. Yeah, not terribly impressive. Hey, we're almost like halfway done actually. It hasn't really taken me that long, you know. It's kind of quite relaxing as well. Just to listen to some music and mindlessly place some blocks. So all is going good and I don't think it'll be too long before all of this is done. So I think what I have to do, I'm going to set myself a target before we record again to get that bit over there done, that bit on that side done as well and maybe we'll show you a little bit in between it being finished completely which won't be too long at all. There are still loads of little stone blocks left behind here and there. We'll get rid of all of those over time Anyway, I can't remember if I said I would do these corners and then a bit more as well, but basically this is all that I have time for at this point, so the next time we come back it will be done, and then we'll be moving on to the last sort of section of the episode, where we'll be working on something up above. So I'm heading over here, I'm going to turn around, and there you go, this is the sort of darkness of the area that we're going to be in, because we will be doing more down here in future episodes, this isn't like the end of the project and one thing I would like to see is this place at night time but anyway that's it for this little update look at that look at all that beautiful amazing darkness that we're looking into right now yeah a moment ago place the last block and I've been so busy placing all of them that I was like oh that's that's the last one then is it and I brought with me a night vision potion so bam you can see a little bit more detail now that is quite different. That's not as nice, is it? <laughs> I think not having night vision down here is a good thing, but of course it's good right now so we can have a closer look. I mean, yeah, it's just a bunch of random blocks. I don't really need to say too much more about it. And apparently, actually, this is the last block. 
So with the down below done, it's time to focus on the up above where we have something that's missing and that is guardian farms. We're going to be building guardian farms out of ice and packed ice which probably sounds really strange but it's just an aesthetic choice and what I've started off by doing is putting the hopper patch that goes at the bottom to collect all the drops. Now these things are about 61 hoppers each and they all go to this central point right here so that means the drops that we get from this farm can go down below and building the farm itself is probably going to be a slow and tedious process. I plan on doing a time lapse for one bit and then the rest will just pop up by themselves. And now what we've got to do is some resource gathering though because we've got to prepare as well as packed ice and ice. We're going to need some signs and leaves, can you believe it, and lava. All sorts of things that sound like they shouldn't go together. So resource gathering is its own game sometimes. We need a ridiculous amount of materials. And the next two things I have to get are some leaves and then some ice. And I was thinking, where in the mesa do we actually have a nice open field to plop down some trees and get all of the leaves from? And of course the Dangland is about the only place that I could think of where there's a nice stretch of flat land. So now what I've done is planted a grid of trees. No idea uh, how many leaves we're going to get in total here. However, you can see I'm well prepared. I've brought with me iron, saplings, bone meal. We're going to be able to get... All that we need and we need 14 stacks by the way and I think I might have actually overdone it here but we'll soon find out. The next mission is to get some ice. It looks like there has been a bit of a creeper blast or something over there and it's night time which is never good for collecting ice because all the mobs want to come and collect some as well don't they? Uh, the thing I'm thinking about here is that we need 40, 40 stacks of ice. This farm is probably not going to be big enough for that, so it means I'm either going to have to do a lot of AFKing here to get the ice that we need, or perhaps I'll go exploring and try and find some natural ice lakes or something like that. I told you the mobs would come and get the ice. You thought I was joking around. The sumer ain't telling no jokes. Get out of here, guy. Give me the ice. Look, a stray. I don't think I've seen one of those here on Hermitcraft before. That's cool. And I'm just wondering, is this going to be a pain to get? You can see over here that there is, yeah, loads of it on dirt. So we can collect this from the edges. But then when we go over here, it's going to drop into the water below, which makes it difficult to collect and a little bit more time consuming. So the ice farm got me only three stacks of ice. So we are definitely going to have to do this. And I think it's probably just a case of sticking to the edges, see how far this river goes and just collect as much as we can. So here they are, the resources needed to build this farm, and I double, triple check these numbers, we actually just need an insane amount of signs, and ice as well, all of these things, leaves are required as well, and there's a little bit more ice up here. Now I'm also going to use the ice to put the water in, so we'll place it and break it, and the other thing I need is lava buckets, and I thought I'd actually just make a trip back and forth to a lava lake, I know there's some in the area because we've been... Uh, digging out all of this obsidian so there's still a little bit more to do but anyway what I'm going to focus on is just getting the basics of one farm done so I can kind of show you how it all works. So it's in this moment here that I can explain a lot of things to you at once. We're going to go down below though this is where the hoppers are we have these signs to hold up lava that's going to be above it and we need to break the stone right here um, using our pick so that the lava that's going to be above drops down and as I say that I realized that there are going to be two levels of lava so what we'll probably do is build another one on top of this and do that one first otherwise when we break the stone above us there's going to be lava below us which doesn't sound safe but anyway where each of these blocks are is where the lava is going to be that means it's going to spread across into every single block and then when we remove the stone it goes down too deep so two layers of that and the drop that we have from where the mobs can spawn the guardians means um, that they'll be killed quickly and their drops collected by the hoppers down below which in 1.11 will drop cooked fish how cool is that <laughs> uh, but another thing is the spawning area so we can also see what's going on with the spawning area here because guardians will move down faster when there is a block next to the water they're in so imagine that the stone is water every single block here 
or water would have a block next to it, which means that the guardians will always drop down quickly. You can see every single one got a block alongside it. Um, so that means that these bits right here where the lava is going to be are going to have pillars above them made out of leaves going all the way up to the top. And that's so that the guardians move down quicker. But I'll explain that more when we get to it. Now what I'm going to do is uh, drop these two levels of lava in and then we'll do the spawning chamber above. So the building process has been a fascinating one. To do the second layer, I needed a fire resistance potion so I could move around freely in the lava and that's the way that we do all of that. And my fire resistance just ran out which is slightly worrying but here is the next bit and <laughs> as soon as I look at this I realise, oh dear, I've made a big mistake. Well, that kind of sucked. I can't believe I actually made that mistake. I should have noticed it while I was placing all of this, that there were signs directly below it, because this is the level they're supposed to be at. Um, so the next thing to do is to place ice. And this ice could potentially cause a lot of problems. It's going to be really tough to test this, actually. You see, if this ice melts because of the lava, it's going to go down there, which is no problem. But if it goes back into the lava... Oh no, it won't go back in because there's signs everywhere. Yeah, wow. So, you know, doing all of this in creative mode is fair enough. Um, but then when you go to build it in survival, there's all these other things that you never really think about. Like, what order should you build this in? And yep, it's melting, which poses a very tricky challenge. Because when the water is in this farm, that's not going to be an issue. But we want our water source blocks to be all the way at the top so it's going to be a bit of an odd one we might have to sort of build it upwards down or let some of the ice melt and anyway this is where leaf blocks are going to go now i can't for the life of me understand why this works but for some reason leaf blocks increase spawning i've watched nembom's video several times over and sometimes i just don't learn stuff unless it's explained to me like by me asking questions but Anyway, somehow having leaf blocks near the spawning area will help increase the spawn rate. So that's why these middle ones, which are also serving the purpose of providing blocks um, for the water to flow downwards, that's why they're here in the middle. So anyway, I'm going to build this upwards. At some point it will be far enough away from the lava for it not to turn into water. And we're going to build up the... Um, the birch leaves here as well all of these are going to come up with us and then when we get to the top we can put the water which will flood down on top of the signs and then I'll have to go back around again and replace all of the melted ice it's a really weird building process and I think actually what might have been smarter is to have gone to the top first placed all of the water and then build the ice around it I think I might give that a try so we're at that moment now where we might just say, actually, this was a terrible idea. Let's find out. So there is no ice going all the way down here. I've got to be really careful what I break. That shouldn't be there. <laughs> I should have done it so that all of the ice was on the inside because then it contributes to turning this all into source blocks that are going to flow directly downwards. And it's that downward stream that we want. So that's why we don't have source blocks down the bottom, which would be very effective actually in <laughs> stopping the ice down there melting because once there's water at the bottom level above the lava and the signs then all is good okay we actually need quite a lot of ice blocks to turn into source blocks here and now we remove all of this hardened clay which will probably just end up being destroyed by uh, the lava down below there's another interesting aspect to this that just crossed my mind Guardians are now able to spawn in this, so as I'm swimming up and down, I'm probably going to get shot by Guardians. There's no easy way to do any of this, is there? It's a conspiracy, I tell ya. <laughs>
And from up here we have a fantastic view of this place. I've had the camera up here for a while and as I was building the last one I was thinking, man this looks so cool. But once again, this is just the beginning of more things. Currently our guardian farms are sort of floating. The plan was to do a little bit more here but I wanted to wrap up the episode and really get it done. So the bases of these will be subject to change. I've got some tidying up to do. And these are going to lead upwards into the sky and eventually we will build something up above the Octavoid, which is officially what we're calling this thing. And let's just fly down below again and have one more look around here. Amazing. We have plans for down below and up above. This isn't the last of the Octavoid that you've seen. So finally I get to wrap this one up and say that that is actually it for this episode. And I've been tempted to do yet another one down here but I've decided actually the future work we will do on the Octavoid will now be in regular episodes because I've got big plans and I don't really want to have it recorded over a big period of time again. Which reminded me to go and check this episode was recorded over a 38 day period and yeah it was it was crazy to do this but it was good fun and now that we're here I've got a massive smile on my face it's all finished and ready for the next stage but anyway that is it from me this episode so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye